Hey buddy JD here and I am in my tackle shed which is a in desperate need of some organization. It's uh, it's gotten away from me here a little bit during the fishing season. And so I'm trying to clear some of these shelves off. These are all just boxes and boxes and boxes of tackle as high as the ceiling. And uh, so I'm trying to organize things here a little bit. And I thought, you know, I've got three, one, two, three levels of all my old salmon plugs. I, you know, really don't fish salmon much anymore other than in Alaska. So, um, it'd be fun to take a look and see what's in some of these boxes as I start to uh, organize them. Should be an interesting trip down memory lane opening all these boxes. A lot of, a lot of good times <laughs> associated with all these plugs. So let's take a look. All right, here we go. First box. Let's see what we got. Fly K15, those are deadly. Oh, look at this, Cal Ripken. So this goes back, this is a Hall of Famer. Goes back to my years on the Nushigak. One of those late 90s, early 2000s. And I used to put a name on the plug because we only had a few plug colors at the lodge and so I put a name on them so I could tell which ones were running better. And then I started notching them just for fun. See how many kings these things could catch. Got quite a few. Oh, look at this one. This one was a uh, one of my all-time favorites, Joe Montana. And this one got to like 105 kills before I finally retired him. And on the Nushigag back in the day, it wasn't hard to get 105 fish to bite. That wasn't the issue. It was hard to get a plug to last. Either you know, finally break off on the kicker prop or something or on the log or they would start to crack that was the biggest thing after so much abuse and you can see just all the notches in this guy notch 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 and then head flip it over a bunch of notches there and over time man they you know they just start to crack and you put it out there and it would sink and so we did all kinds of repair work but joe montana man what a cool plug that was and then if you notice on the belly we have some black i guess it's duct tape And my buddy Jeremy Warder, who was guiding there at the time, was convinced at that period, when, I don't know, the water was low and clear or something, that the uh, <laughs> the fish were being a little more selective, so you wanted some dark on the underside of your belly. So um, we, we did what we could to make them black, so. Let's see what else we got in here. Look like the standard T-50s. This color right here was always one of my favorites, especially in the Maglip series. But got some big boys here, T60s. Uh, let's see here. Uh, da, 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 just kind of your standards. This one's interesting. I know from uh, what I hear, these ones with the labeling on them are worth something. So, got a Brad's killer fish. Too, too exciting there. Got some old veterans in there. That one, I guess that's back in the old mark em up days. Yeah, that one had some kills. It's a good color. Another one of the Nushigak specials there. Lots of chinks in that one. Look at this one. This is cool. I remember buying this in Walnut Grove, California at a tackle shop. I should have left it in the box, probably. Doesn't look like I ever ran it. It's just a funky color. I've never seen that color since. I don't know what you call it. It's got a little blemish there in the lacquer. It's like a like a hot rod or something. <laughs> it's kind of cool. Oh boy, this is a special box right here. Can you even name those plugs right there? These plugs essentially saved my fledgling guiding career back uh, when it was just kind of getting started. See if you can figure out what these are. So, not a quick fish. It's not a flat fish. You give up? These plugs that saved me. The 
Elmo's Zipfish. That's right, Elmo's Zipfish. They were made by a company called The Producers, which is long since defunct. And these little suckers were cheap. I, mean, I think they retailed for about three or four bucks. And they had a terrible, terrible finish. This is a custom paint job. Another custom paint job there. The problem with these plugs was, uh, this is another custom paint job. I did a kind of a double trouble there. But the plating they had on them, as you can see here, that's, this one isn't really roughed up from fish. That is just terrible cheap painting or plating. There's another example. Well, that one looks like it got bit a little more, but the plating came off them a lot. But I tell you what, that is one fishy plug right there. These things caught so many fish, and quite literally saved my guiding career. So the story with these guys is uh, Big Fred Kentawi, I think, turned me on to them. So there was a season where I was struggling to catch kings. It was a new fishery for me on the Sacramento River trolling downstream. And for some reason, I just couldn't get bit as much as everybody else, which isn't surprising when you're new and, and trying to figure things out. But I made a switch late in the season to one of these and it was unbelievable. And I don't know what it is. These things fish really well everywhere I've fished them. And I don't know, I mean, you put it in the water and the action looks pretty similar to me. Probably need to get Buzz Ramsey on this and have him take a look at it because he could probably tell me what the deal is. But these things, they, I don't know. I don't know what it is. I mean, if you listen to it, it has a, a softer rattle. Almost like a little bit of sand in there as opposed to some of those uh, bigger BBs that, you know. So I don't know if that's what it was. It just had some little vibration that you know was invisible to the human eye or or something but these little guys literally changed me from zero to hero the rest of its history i mean i went from not catching fish to being a highliner almost every day and i have to give these plugs credit Now the stressful part of this story was once I figured these things out and had total confidence in them, I went to go buy some more and they were gone. I called the company, phone line didn't work. No email, internet site was down. So I saw that Bass Pro or Cabela, one of those companies had a sale on these. So I went to the catalog and tried to order some there out. And so what had happened was this company, the producers, which made all these Elmo zip fish, had gone defunct and then Bass Pro Shops or Cabela's uh, bought up all their old stock and sold them, you know, blew them out at clearance and sold them out like, you know, lickety split. So I, I never got any. So then I panic. I got this lure that works and I can't find them. And what am I going to do with my last handful? Well, I scoured the internet and finally found a place called, uh, I think it was Frank's Great Outdoors in Minnesota or somewhere. And they had a bunch, I don't know, a hundred of them left or something. And they were all either silver. So that's how I ended up with painting them like that. Or they had this one, chrome with a green back, which was fine. And so I bought every last one of them they had, had cases of them, which is good. Cause again, the plating just wears out on these things. And that one's got some teeth marks in it. But somewhere I've got a couple of these that are just absolute hall of famers. So hopefully we'll find those. Man, those, what a plug. Aha! Well, here it is. Like I was saying, the lure that saved my career, the Elmo's Zip Fish by the producers, Championship Fishing Lures. There's old Boomer Wells, the quote, world fishing champion who I guess designed it. And then this is funny. Uh, you can see it's a uh, 5 8 ounce Type F floating, but the part that cracks me up is the tough chrome plating, which was a load of crap. That was the worst chrome plating ever. But it did have good VMC hooks on them. These things were really actually pretty tacky sharp. Some directions for the old zip fish. Attach lure to the end of the line, add water, mix with excitement to taste, then try all the other Boomer Wells lures. And then here's a little thing about Tyrone Boomer Wells, the champion of all times. I don't know if that's self-proclaimed or what. Um, oh, here you go. Caution, do not, uh, do not casually hang lure over the side of the boat. The producers will not be responsible for loss of tackle extremities or sore muscles. Made in China, producers, Kalamazoo, Michigan. Yeah, they had a sense of humor anyway. 
Oh, Boomer Wells. I have to look Boomer Wells up to see if he was an actual dude. But I still have uh, a fair amount of those. And then we still got to get to some other random plug boxes. And holy moly, uh, there's a lot. Isn't it crazy how much stuff we buy? I mean, this is a whole box of K16s, 15Xs, looks like, and kind of a mixture. It doesn't look like a single one of those has ever been used. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking there. Throw that in the pile. Random box of maglips. This is kind of a funky color. It wasn't one I ever did very well on, but I'm sure somewhere somebody is drooling over that. Glow one. Random box there. And then we have this big old box of holy moly piles and piles. Oh, oh, here we go. Check these out. Let's see here. Got a whole box of these. So I bet you can't guess what that is, especially since there's no label. This is an interesting one. Let me see if I can find one that's out of the package. Is that for a funky color? It looks like something rubbed off on it there, but kind of pink and gold flaky. Yeah, that's an odd, odd duck. And then you got this guy here. So this was kind of the flagship. And a friend of mine had these built, I'm sure in China, and they were going to market them as, um, eh, I can't remember the name, Ospreys or something. Got kind of a weird looking face and had a little bit of an indention right there for your wrap. And then this built-in metallic flake stuff that Looks like it rubs off pretty easy. I took them to Alaska one year, caught some fish on them, definitely ran, but for some reason I never really got too excited about them. Kind of cool color though, uh, unlike this one. This one's kind of kind of odd. Again, there's probably somebody out there going, oh, oh yeah, yeah, I'll take that one. Here's a uh, gold with, I guess, a glow bud. What else we got in here? Let's see. Silver pink. There's a uh, kind of a California watermelony looking thing. Uh, what I didn't like was the screw eyes. See that gold guy there and that guy go. They were pretty chintzy. And I think when I look, think back on it, I think that's what uh, kind of kept me from using these. I could have probably glued them in or something if I really thought about it. But there's a silver orange butt model. And I might have to revisit these again just for fun. Because I know I'd be the only one using them. That's for sure. Let's see. What do we have here? Ah, a bunch of big old T55s. That looks like a chick even, yeah. Big boys. Next box is a box of look like brand spanking new 5.0 Maglips, which is a hell of a salmon plug. Those look like I never used them and probably just had so many I never got around to them. A bunch of steely plug boxes too. There's another box of, uh, it says maglips, but those are all, look like 16s. Let's see here. Mm, some old chewed up ones. This one's got a lot of Two marks and back when I was still marking them up. That one didn't look like it got put away very clean. That's a plug faux pas. And we're still going, folks. Now, this is just a box of kind of straight randomness, but uh, oh, there's there's one of those old Elmos. My old favorites got mixed up. This is just kind of a hodgepodge, but what I see in here that's fun is these two. So these were made by a guy called Splatter Dut, <laughs> Splatter Dot Customs. He takes, uh, these are Maglip four, uh, four fives, and he paints them up. So he painted me up a fresh banana, up a rotten banana, and you can right down to the, the barcode and, and everything, the sticker on there, and a beautiful paint job. It's funny, because the guy sent me these plugs to try them out and show me his painting skills, which, I mean, very, very impressive on the paint jobs here. 
but not knowing me, that's kind of a that's a kind of a gutsy move sending uh, a guy some banana plugs. Now, I am not a banana phobe. I do not fear the banana. I don't have any problem with bananas on board. Big old box of Yakima hog nose. Yeah, it looks like a few 5.0s in there too, but mostly the big hog nose. And that was a big, loud, mean, ugly plug, but uh, in, in big water, off color water, those things would dive down deep absolutely slay they're kind of intimidatingly large but uh they work really well got a bunch of those i don't think they even make those anymore i know the rest of the maglip lineup still going strong but i think those these big boys um went away anyway i caught lots of fish on those i've got a few of those somewhere that had some some memories those that box doesn't look like i can use them is this a box of that one's actually labeled properly. 4.5 maglips, which I think was the salmon plug. Once that came out, that really changed everything for me and became the uh, the go-to plug. This this one. Deadly. Uh, this one's all well, it's dirty, but it's all all chewed up. You can see that right there. Love that. Love that. Got a lot of chewed up ones in here. Oh man, here's your just your standard chrome and chartreuse. He's all bit up. Yeah, I got a lot of oh, that's green. Ouch. I think that was a good color for me. This guy's all charred up. That is a heck of a plug. These all need to be washed. I must have put them away at the end of the season once without. Really doing a whole lot of TLC because it usually wasn't my style, but I think I was so disenchanted the last salmon season I fished that I figured I'd never use these again, and it's kind of coming to the point where I was right. Well, I've cleared out some space, making room for all my uh, lake stuff now, but I don't know. This is it's been a fun little trip down memory lane looking at all these plugs. It also makes me so sad to think about where our salmon fisheries have of uh, how far they've fallen. It's it's, God, it's just so sad to think about how I would, I mean, I can't even imagine ever thinking that, yep, all these plugs, I'm not gonna use them anymore. Just no use for them. So that's, uh, I don't know, that sucks. But uh, I still have some more to go through, but uh, I'm gonna give it a rest because I'm getting bummed out. <laughs> so anyway, thanks for watching. Lights out. Feel free to, uh, like and subscribe jazz if you feel like it supposedly it helps awesome see you in the next one thanks adios i'm gonna cry myself a river